There are tons of business podcasts to choose from, but only one has the stamp of approval. Kristen Stampini is South Florida's leading real estate entrepreneur and your trusted source for everything real estate. I would like to welcome my listeners and thank you for joining us today for another episode of my podcast, The Stamp of Approval. I'm Kristen Stampini, co-founder of The Stampini team with Remax Services in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm also a certified real estate coach with the Craig Proctor Systems and the owner of Global Virtual Real Estate Assistance. I'm a real estate investor and a national trainer and public speaker. You know, the Stamp of Approval podcast was launched to share and educate other realtors, consumers, and other business owners across North America by sharing value and content to my listeners in each and every episode, as well as share my experiences and triumphs and failures and strength throughout my entire life with the hope of my audience being able to expand their knowledge on everything real estate, business, sales, and mindset oriented. So today, one of my favorite attorneys here, we have Hillary Zalman. She is a commercial litigation and real estate attorney admitted with the Florida Bar. Hillary has been practicing in South Florida for the past 13 years where she runs a private practice and serves as a special independent magistrate for the city of Boynton Beach. Her focus is uh, her focus in law is in commercial and residential landlord and tenant law as well as real estate closings and title insurance. You know, Hillary is driven by helping her clients and res- to resolve matters and is overjoyed and happy. You know, we're happy to have her and she's happy to be here today. Welcome, Hillary. Oh, it's an honor to really be on your show. I, I to the listeners, I have so much respect for Kristen Aww. Stampini. She she knows this market and it's changing from from when we used to talk about short sales oh, to yeah. just the ever changing market. I mean, Kristen's just on top of everything. So I respect you so much. Oh. I'm glad to be here. And in the same, you know, Hillary, we used to do monthly investment seminars and Hillary, you know, was a part of that and she was so awesome. And, you know, I personally have used her throughout the years and my family has used her. So somebody who I really trust, um, you know, being in Florida and not being from Florida. Florida, you know, I've definitely seen a lot of scams and, 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 you know, even in the business that you're in, uh, Hillary, I haven't always seen the most honest, um, lawyers out there. Right. (laughs) And you're definitely at the top of my list of being honest and fair and everything else. So today, um, you know, for the listeners, we're going to talk about title insurance and closings and really how to protect yourself and avoid scams. So go ahead and jump right into it. No, that's great. So um, over, over the years, just as a little background, I've been practicing for almost 13 years in Florida, and I, I would work with a lot of landlord-tenant issues, you know, with owners of property. And over time, I would see them buying maybe some more property and doing some closings. I would review these closings, Kristen, and they were either just wrong or they had all kinds of extra fees or I, – I, I mean – My mind was blown on what was happening at closing. And so I decided, you know, I really need to expand into this and just do this for my clients. Um, And it's, it's, it's a lot of things are happening out there. It's not being regulated um, with closings and what's happening for our realtor listeners. I feel like, you know, you have a title agent and some of their duties are falling on falling on the realtors. A realtor is trying to wear all these different caps, being a lawyer, being a title agent, being you know, and being an agent. And it's, this is not their job. They don't have to do all this, and they're they're you know drowning and wearing so many caps, and it's not fair. So um, yeah, that's definitely why I went into well, working uh, as a title agent. Yeah, and that's awesome. And the other thing is, is you know, there's so many. Um, ex, you know, when, when people are hiring somebody to do title and the title company, don't they say that they don't cover this and they don't cover that? And so they can, you know, a lot of people can say that a lot of, you know, title companies can say they really don't cover anything, right? If there's ever a claim. It, it, a, a title company should be with you as, as a supportive team member from that day you sign the contract to help you prepare your file for closing, making sure your property is free and clear of title. Then they should be there at closing, basically running it for you, making sure everything runs smoothly so that all your hard work, you know, goes well. And then post-closing, which to me is the most important, is making sure all these documents from your biggest purchase you've ever made 
has been recorded. People don't even, they forget about it. Oh, I'm in my house. Wait, was your deed recorded? Was your mortgage recorded? Was your mortgage paid off from the prior mortgage? All these things are, should be happening with title. Um, so it, it's really scary. If, if you don't know who you're working with title uh, and your biggest purchase in your life, um, you, you could have, you could have detrimental situation. So, you know, I thought, you know, just when we hired, not really, but you know, this is what people think a lot of the time, not me, obviously being in the real estate industry, but right. a lot of people think that they hire, they're all the same. No, they're not all the same. Um, now, a lot of times the, the cost should be very similar. Wherever, wherever you go, there should be. Well, it's not. It's not. It, it, it should It should be similar, um, you know, but um, each county, though, is really different. I do find that, for example, Miami-Dade, um, generally, I think the costs seem to be quoted higher um, than Broward and maybe a little higher than Palm Beach. Um, but you know, a, a title agent should really be there to protect you. And, and as realtors, your title agent should be making you look good <laughs> because if you have a bad closing experience, you go through all this and then your, your clients show up at closing and go, what, what's this number? What am I paying? What am I doing? That's their last experience at closing. And, and they're going to have a bad taste in their mouth. So a title agent, you want to try to get them to, to, really be transparent. What am I going to pay for everything? And that, that leads me to my number one topic I like to talk about is in this, this the, the Florida contract under section nine, it says who pays for title insurance, who pays for all these costs, but none of them are itemized out. So say your house is 200,000. People don't realize they're going to be paying thousands extra for title insurance this for a municipal lien search, this for a title search, this for a title agent. It's not itemized out in these contracts. And then they go to the realtor and go, why didn't I know? Why didn't I know? The title uh, title agent should tell them right away how much everything should cost. That's right. And then, um, can you were talking about different counties and different costs and things. Can the title company charge them more than what the county's charging them for something? Like to pull liens or whatever, whatever it is. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. If it costs 800, I mean, sorry, $8 and 50 cents to record uh, your warranty deed one page, then that title agent charges you $8 and 50 cents. But you know, that doesn't happen at all. That is completely not only unethical, but that is not allowed. That is not allowed. And they can't charge you an extra 50 cents, 10 cents. And if they do, they are obligated after closing to send you back anything extra. So if you paid uh, an extra 25 cents, but I think what Kristen, what you're referring to is they're paying an extra $50. <laughs> they're paying extra $100. And they're paying extra a lot more than that. That is that. This is why this is why I think this is one of the last biggest scams that are running in our market is things, things that are occurring in closing. And I'll tell you why this is my, this is my big speech, Kristen. This is, this is what I think is happening. You're a new buyer. You're so excited. You've got your eye on the ball. You're spending $300,000. It's your biggest purchase. Your eye is not on all these little fees because you're focused on this big amount you're about to spend. So that's why people get scammed because all these little fees that, you know, here, this, this, but they add up. If you're at a restaurant giving a tip to someone, you're not going to hand someone a thousand dollars just because you're at the restaurant. You know, you're, you're, you're calculating that tip. Just like if you're at a closing, you shouldn't handle hand someone a thousand dollars for nothing. Uh, it, it just shouldn't be. And and that's right. And the thing is, is that as a realtor out there, the realtors that are listening, you guys need to know this as well. So you need to review that HUD statement and to know number one who you're working with. And even if they're, you know, if if you're referring it or you know. A lot of the time, the buyers or sellers have somebody that they're, you know, that they choose. Um, that, but are they charging them the the correct fees? Right. And that's right. And sometimes let's let's stay away from scams. Let's just say there's some honest mistakes. A title agent might put uh, the title search or the municipal lien search on the buyer side instead of the seller side, or the seller side instead of the buyer side. And as an agent, it's good to familiarize yourself because maybe you'll catch that. If they have a lawyer, they should catch that. But it's good that everybody puts their eyes on the HUD and really familiarize themselves and take a look at that section nine of the contract and see where all these payments should be. Um, 
but it's, it's a lot of work. When you hire a title agent and they're calculating tax proration and association proration and they're calculating, you know, um, they're taking your money and they're paying off banks and substantial amounts of money, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You really need to trust your title agent. This is this is a lot going on and you need to, to find that you respect and, and, you know, they have a good reputation. That's right. So um, now it, it, tell us the costs, you know, because there's some there's some fixed costs, right? As far as title. Right. So and that's, a, that's an awesome question. Um, at the beginning, ask your title agent, realtors, ask your title agent, what, what costs are you, you know, give me a quote sheet of what your costs are. You should generally see a settlement fee, uh, maybe a municipal lien search and title search, uh, maybe a wire fee. Um, the things you want to look out for are some strange items like a document storage fee uh, or, or extra fees that you just don't quite know what they are. Um, I've, I've seen all kinds of funny made up things like that. Uh, I don't even know what a document storage fee is. <laughs> but if you start seeing a list of 10 fees, um, that's odd. It should be three or four items, um, and they should really have, you know, um, quotes or invoices attached to them. So it's very clear cut on where that money is going. And then um, does do you have to hire a title company to do a closing? Um, great question. If, if you want title insurance, you have to have a licensed title agent. Um, and that opens a whole door if, if you, you know, you want to have title insurance or that was going to be my next it. question. Why, what's right. the advantage of having title insurance? Okay. So, um, in Florida, uh, there's two types of title insurance. You've got lenders title insurance. So say you're buying a house and you need a loan and it's with bank of bank. I'll call it bank of bank. Yeah. The bank is going to require you to have title insurance to protect their investment. They're giving you $500,000. You better believe they want some insurance. You don't have an option. You have to have insurance. In addition, you can also buy an owner's policy. That's optional. Do I recommend it? Um, probably. This is your biggest probably purchase in your life. And how do you know what's happened on this piece of property before you've been there? Does the owner who's selling it to you really own it? Um, are there liens on it from prior contractors? Are there association liens on there? Are there utility liens? I've seen closings where there's thousands and thousands of taxes owed. And, you know, this comes up in title searches. And you might not want to buy it anymore. <laughs> if you see there's a $20,000 lien, you know, I'm a magistrate. And uh, I do that part time. And the city... Every city can put liens on properties if, and, and you'd be surprised how many properties just are sitting there with money owed to the city and you may not want to buy it at that point. Yeah. So what is, so what does title insurance cover? So title insurance really is a history, historical look at your home to make sure you're getting, you actually are getting a real deed of ownership because if the prior owner doesn't own it, then you're not getting it. And also to make sure you don't have liens on your property. Uh, so once you take it over, if there's liens owned, it's your lien. So you want to make sure you have insurance. But doesn't, not all title insurance, not all title companies pull the liens to give to the buyer or seller, right? Or the buyer. Uh, they should be. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the law they that they have to be. The, the whole purpose, a, a t an insurance company generally won't be issuing title, you know, each insurance company, and there's not that many, they have requirements and they go to issue title on this property. You have to do a title search. But we they don't have to, do, to tell the buyer. They don't have to tell the buyer? Yeah. Well, like in the contract, in, in our Florida contract, like we don't have to tell like the buyer of the liens to have them fix them. Like they have to, if, they have to require and, and ask for that information. No, so I'll, to make sure I understand you properly, say, say a tax lien comes up. It's, it's not tax lien, like, tax. um, oh. like something okay. of their, their, their yard. A contractor lien. Yep. yep. Things like okay. that. Say a contractor lien comes up and, um, the, the title insurance company, well, not is not allowed to 
allow that to close and not allow it to issue the title until that's either fixed or the seller has to put up the amount of the lien into escrow. Meaning if he owes $3,000, he's got to put that in escrow um, for the buyer. Or so that, you know, so in essence, if 3000 is owed, that's not going to close until the seller uh, deals with it. Yeah. So the, for our listeners, just give a couple, um, again, a couple things for closing our episode of what you recommend. And then also tell, you know, tell them how they can reach out to you to either hire you for closing and title and, and everything, um, or if they have any questions. Sure. So, um, I really think with, with closings and title, um, I, I think that, you know, as realtors and especially new realtors, you want to familiarize yourself with, with section nine of, of the standard contract. And look, is your client going to be paying for this and this, or is it going to be the buyer paying for this and this? So you're prepared to answer your client's question. Um, and then you can reach out to the title agent and, Ask them, what do you think these quotes are going to be? It's better if you get this addressed early on than the client being surprised at the end. I know nobody wants to tell them extra fees, but they'll get mad at the end if it's a lot extra owed. And then, you know, you want them to refer back to you. That's right. So, so I think it's good. I think transparency is good. If people like to know what they're going to pay, I think that makes people happy and then they don't have surprises at the end. Yep, that's really good. And definitely mention, you know, reaching out to Hillary that you heard her, you know, on our podcast. And how can how can the listeners reach out to you? Either to hire you. you or, you know, to ask you some questions. Thank you. And I'm just going to end off with one more thing. Please don't send any wires unless you call the other side and confirm oh, yeah. their wire instructions. Be careful if you guys uh, don't open any emails unless you know who it's coming from. There's so many scams. I could do a whole podcast just on that. But you can you can reach me. My name is Hillary Zalman, Z A L M A N, and uh, look us up on ZalmanLawFirm.com or on Facebook, or you can call me directly. Please five six one seven one six three three two seven. Awesome. Thank you, listeners. And thank you, Hillary. Uh, and I really appreciate you being here today. Uh, of course, again, you guys, like I've, like I've said before, I've used Hillary um, as title. I've used her as an attorney. I've used her in tenant law. I've used her, you know, for all <laughs> sorts of different things. And she's awesome. One of my very thank favorite you, attorneys. So uh, like you. I said, I personally recommend her. And thank you, listeners. Have a great day. Bye-bye.